Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the Anthurium clarinervium. This is a video that I've put off for a very long time because this is such a slow growing plant. This is probably one of my slowest growing Anthuriums. Uh, this plant hails from Chiapas in Mexico. Feel free to, go to Google that because that place is Stunning. I really want to visit there someday when I can. But it's a highlands region in a dense forest, and that's going to tell us that this plant actually likes to be in bright shade, not too much direct sunlight, although a little bit would be good for it, and because it's a little bit closer to the sun, I guess in high latitude. But it probably likes a little bit of a cooler temperature than, let's say, your uh, Anthurium crystallinum, which is what they're oftentimes confused for. The Crystallinum actually have a video which I'm going to link up above. It's very different care from this guy. And I know that the Clarinervium is very successfully grown in the Western civilizations of Europe and the US. So this is going to suggest that they like lower humidity, they like it a little bit colder. And yeah, I don't know why we have such a difficult time growing them here in Indonesia. This plant is very difficult to come by here. They're a lot more expensive than your Crystallinums. I would say probably about 20 times the price. So yeah, uh, the other notable difference is that the leaves here don't get as big as the crystallinums. They stay relatively small, though they can get to, I don't know, the size of a face if you let it grow out a little bit. Uh, I do struggle with this plant and I had root rot before and I have brought it back. So it survived the root rot. And as you can see here, there are many leaves with a little bit of blemishes here. This is actually quite normal for a lot of anthuriums, especially for the velvety leaves ones. That's usually caused by, again, when you rot the plant, you're lowering its immune system. So it's causing a lot of uh, opportunity for infection, whether it's bacterial or fungal. But it, that is exacerba exacerbated <laughs> by misting. So if you get the leaves wet and water stays on these velvety leaves for too long, that's going to invite a lot of bacteria and fungal spores to settle there and cause damage to the leaves. It may also cause the leaf to burn when you have it um, misted under really, really strong sunlight. It's going to zero in, it's going to magnify the ray into that spot. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the beautiful specimen here to show you. This new leaf is quite perfect though, it's quite beautiful. But all the other leaves are imperfect and I've accepted that with most of my anthuriums. Although again, if I say if you want to be super gung-ho about caring for anthuriums, don't get the leaves wet, fertilize it lightly, give it very good uh, nutrients so that it can have a good immune system against further infection. Also do give them a bit of humidity. As I said, this part doesn't require as much humidity as the crystallinums it seems, but when you give them a bit of humidity, they're also less stressed out. And of course, pests. Pests will cause your plants to have defects on them. They will have bite marks and pests can also bring bacteria and fungus with them. It can spread them. So yeah, just be careful. So anyways, I devil on too much. Summarize it. Bright and direct light. Me I would say medium to bright and direct light with a little bit of direct sunlight. Water it lightly. I would say don't let this drop too completely. I give this my aeroid potting mix. I do uh, put the top here sometimes, uh, top dress it with sphagnum moss. I did so here, but I don't, I don't know where the moss went. It may have been blown away. But they like to have their main stem here wrapped in moss to retain a little bit of humidity. I just water it lightly every day. It's in terracotta pots, very, very porous. They actually are epiphytic, so they like to climb in nature. They're not supposed to grow in the ground. So they don't want to drought as much as your monsteras or philodendrons, so keep that in mind, so keep their roots slightly damp, not dried out completely. That's why they're not the easiest plant to care for. It does take a bit of practice. And if you suffer a little bit of, you know, over underwatering, just adjust accordingly. And, and actually most of the times, they can also adapt to your uh, miswatering, your, your watering habits. But it'll take them a few leaves to get there. I fertilize this the same way I do with my other house plants. Lightly, I use chemical, I use uh, natural means of fertilizer with worm casting. So I just do it often, but everything is just diluted. Again, with pests, spider mites would love them, especially if kept indoors. I don't have any mealybugs or other pests on them. So whenever you're doing a pest control treatment around your plant, just give this one a good spray. It will probably appreciate it. This uh, Clarinervium actually puts out a lot of flowers. They put out more flowers than leaves. So what do you want to do when you have these flowers? Unless you want to pollinate them, which you can, but I'm not sure how you do it. You just want to, this is a flower, for example. You just want to take it off. 
before it even has a chance to open up because they, they will drain a lot of energy from the plant. I don't always do it. I sometimes neglect it so I don't really uh, prune the flowers too often but you should if you want to have more uh, faster growth. So in today's video I'm going to be propagating this and I'm going to give you an update. The nodes are super close together so it's not going to be an easy propagation but this is an old plant. I've got this about a year and a half ago so it's got quite a lot long stem up here. So let's undress this guy and we'll see where it goes. Alrighty, let's do this. I've got my knife sterilized. Let me take this out of the pot. Hopefully I don't see any more root rot. <laughs> that would be very embarrassing. I see a lot of healthy roots actually. Yes, this is what we want. Look at these fat roots. Actually, with plants with fat roots like this, it's going to suggest that they can hold a little bit of moisture, of a little bit of water. Uh, so they don't need to be watered as much. These roots are actually thicker than your Anthurium chrysalinum. So I guess maybe I'll backtrack a little bit with my care in that these guys can actually withstand a little bit more drought and they may appreciate a slightly more dry, drying out period than your Anthurium chrysalinum, which is probably why they grow so well maybe in uh, the Western civilizations. Maybe because they are uh, more, more prone to drying up over there. All right, I'm gonna be very greedy with this because I'd, I've been waiting so long to propagate it. It's got many nodes. So the, the anatomy is that every leaf that comes out will have an aerial root and will have a growing eye. Although this is probably gonna be very difficult to see here and maybe more seasoned propagators can tell better, but I am still learning as I go. So let's see. I think the first thing that we need to identify is that there are such many Look at how long these, this is, this main stem is. I can chop it up into pieces because ah, I see one growing eye here, I think. There, I think that's one growing eye. I don't know if you can see carefully. Or is that an aerial root? I don't know, but anyways, each of these aerial roots, this is one node. It should coincide with one growing eye. So let me start taking things off. Okay, so this is what our first cutting looks like. It's got so much roots. In fact, most of these roots are here. So this is probably going to take off really well. I can actually turn this into two cuttings, I think. Because you see, I don't know if that's the growing eye or not. I really don't. Let me look around some more. I think it could be. And this could be the second. Yeah, this could be another growing eye. So that's one and that's two. Let me see if I, want, I can cut right above the, the lower growing eye. Yep, okay. So yeah, that's a, probably a growing eye and I see maybe there are more nodes even down below here because I see a few lines. And this as well, this probably has about two to three nodes on this cutting. So I'm gonna rub a little bit of a activated charcoal on these. It's just this activated charcoal powder to make sure that they don't get infected. It's a good uh, habit to have. I don't always use it, but it's a good habit to have. Okay, I'm gonna keep cutting upwards. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just gonna be randomly cutting. Hopefully try to preserve as much roots as possible. Keeping in mind I want at least two or three nodes in each cut. Yeah, there you go. That's a few nodes in here. I would say, I don't know, two to three nodes and there's a lot of roots. So this is going to take off just fine. I may actually just do this straight in my aeroid potting mix. Although I must tell you that Anthuriums, they love, 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 love sphagnum moss. They love to be propagated in moss. Hang on, I forgot to... All right, so up, up top here, this is where things get a little bit nerve wracking because everything is so difficult. If you can see here, it's like an alien world. Nothing is symmetrical. Nothing makes sense up here. Try to... I'm going to lose a few leaves just so you know for sure. Okay, this one came right off. This is the top cutting. And this is definitely going into sphagnum moss. 
because it doesn't have a lot of roots. It's only got this much roots here. Dip that in charcoal and yeah. Next cut. This is the second cut. I don't know how many nodes are in here. Let me see. Ah, I cut into a growing eye. I don't know if this is going to sprout or not. Uh, let me show you here. And that right there, that is a growing eye. Um, yeah, I cut a little bit below that, but I don't know if it, it sometimes it will work. It will uh, still sprout, but there should be another growing eye somewhere in the, on the top because I see a few nodes here, but they're just so, so close together. And I try to peel as much, much of this sheath off because they can rot and rot can invite fungus. Uh, rub some charcoal on it. And this is going into moss, uh, considering how many roots, how little roots it has. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna take off this lower leaf because it is a little bit damaged here, but also too many leaves in this cutting. So it's a leaf to root ratio where, you know, you don't have that many roots and these roots are gonna have to support the, the two leaves before it was three. And then it's gonna have to try to put energy into uh, putting out new shoots as well. I see a growing eye, hang on, this is one. This red thing here, it's a little red nub. I don't know if you're gonna see, <laughs> yeah. That's going to moss. And this, I think I'll divide it into two. I'll cut it exactly in half. Do, 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 do. I'm getting better at this, I guess. Be I mean, I had a lot of practice with my Anthurium crystallinum. <laughs> That's why you should always practice propagation. Sometimes it's not really for, for money or for anything. It's just for, you know, to learn. Okay. Yeah, for this one, I really don't know. I just can't really see the growing eye on this. It's just way too, way too close. But something should sprout out of this. And this is going into stagnum moss. There's not many aerial roots. The aerial roots here actually rotted off. So you know what? In that case, I'm going to take off one leaf here. Something tried to sprout from the back of the leaf here. This is probably a flower. But yeah, this leaf is gone. So I'm just going to keep one leaf here to photosynthesize. And hopefully something will grow out of this stump here. And finally, we have this one that I'm gonna, hang on, let me rub, because I tend to forget to rub the activated charcoal. This is going to moss as well. And this should have a lot, uh, one or two growth point here because it has a, a pretty uh, substantial amount of main stem here. All right, and we are done. So we've got four with leaves and four with just the stumps from the lower cuts. So we've got eight pots. Wish me luck. And again, I want to care for this in the way that I want to keep it out of the rain because it's raining season now. I want to keep this just humid. Do not compact your moss. This is how you want your moss to be, airy and fluffy. I just want to mist the moss, not the leaves, every day, but a little bit at a time. So it's just never completely dry, but it's just like that blanket humidity in there. Very, very comfortable humidity. So I'll see you guys in a few months. Wish me luck. Welcome to a six weeks update. We lost one of the leaves. I remember it rotted off and died off. Uh, so this is every one here. This is one, this is two. Uh, nothing's grown out of there yet, but the leaves are not happy. This is a little bit overwatered, I believe. Uh, and yeah, the potting mix is over there. So let's see if there's any past or anything. Uh, don't see, don't see anything that bad back here. Let me check here. I think this is just, this is not um, spider mites. You get better light. Do you have spider mites? Do you have thrips? Nope. Nope, not that I can see. I did treat this for pesticides a few days ago. Sp sprayed my whole uh, garden down actually. But yeah, the roots seems to be okay down here. So uh, this other one here, this is a beautiful cutting. And the roots are doing, oh, look at this one, it's sticking out of the pot. Uh, it's doing really well. I don't want to disturb it too much, but this is doing okay. And then we lost a few of the ones with leaves. And then these are just, the babies that sprouted, look at how cute the little leaf is. I'm really surprised it only took five weeks and there's another growth point here happening, another 
a vine will appear from here, or is that a root? Um, I think it's vines. I think it's leaves, because roots I don't think it's that green, but I'm not sure. And then there's another baby one here, look at how pretty this one is. Hello little one. But nothing else has sprouted yet. I did feel for this earlier and I think, I really think that this is mush. I really do. Let me take this to the table. Uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in this one. This is soft right here. But this main uh, stem here, this bulk here, this is pretty hard. So I may, I may just give this more time actually. Yeah, <laughs> but nothing else is growing yet. So I'm gonna give this more time and I'll update you guys in a few months. Hopefully we'll see more leaves. It is a four and a half weeks update since the last one. And this one, I just wanted to film quickly. Sorry about the mess. I decided to film today because this leaf, I cut it off because the this is the top uh, cutting actually. Look at that, that's really disgusting. So it's got bacteria, it's probably, probably got spider mites on it. So yeah, when you see this, this is bacteria, this is burnt maybe, maybe some direct sunlight got to it. Because usually bacteria don't hit in a big spot like this, in the middle of the leaf, that's usually burnt. But I do see signs of spider mites. But anyways, I cut it off. And this is what I cut it off from. And look at that, that's putting out a new shoot. I do want to spray this with neem oil because I want to make sure that the spider mites don't get on the, and the bacteria don't get on the leaves. So neem oil is, um, has a lot of strong antimicrobial properties, which is antifungal and antibacterial. This one is the same too, it was affected by, this one had two leaves, but we lost one earlier. So this is the second leaf. This one doesn't seem to have any spider mites, but it's got a lot of bacteria and fungus. There's like fungus rust, there's like these bacteria. I don't know the names of all these bacteria. I don't really know how to identify them, but I do know that neem oil really works as a fungicide and uh, as antibacterial properties. So I actually was trying to take this out of this pot earlier, but this whole thing just snapped right off <laughs> like that. So uh, underneath that, there was this little baby growth. So I am glad that I did that. I was trying to re um, check the root. Oh, I see two, two baby growths. Look at that. I see, this is such a resilient plant. I'm gonna correct the position. It looks like it's slanting <laughs> sideways, but I'm, I'm gonna correct the position, but I'm really glad. This one has two shoots. But let me quickly show you also the babies. These are some of the cute little ones. Oh my God, look at these cute little baby leaves. I love them so much. So I have been, interviewing some people about pollinating anthurium so there will be some content coming up maybe in February or in March about hybridizing also in pollination and things like that and they are uh, they can set thousands of seeds and they will have these babies but to get them to this size it takes so long so for me I do prefer to just cut up my plants because I don't have the space for a thousand little seedlings anyways but I do love this process of cutting up plants this is really worrisome hang on let me see the back side it is looks clean yeah it looks clean to me I, it, sometimes when you have a spider mite attack this is what the leaves look like on the front so yeah I see the little dots too so this may have some spider. Uh, my gardener did spray this area down with neem oil a few days ago and a few weeks ago. So maybe there were some spider mites, but they are gone now. But I see some signs of attack. So here's another six weeks update. I can't remember where the one in terracotta pot went. I really cannot find it here. We did rearrange the garden at some point. But this is the little one that was saved, that was in moss. And it's doing all right, it's put out a leaf. Uh, the next leaf should do okay. And then the others, they're actually putting out more leaves. Look at this tiny little one. They look so much better now, look at that. This one, let me see. Oh, it's healthy. Look at that new little leaf here. This one's also put out a leaf. They all look a little bit different, huh? The leaves, look at that. <laughs> they have slightly different characteristics, which is really cool. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna end this uh, video here. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagation, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye!